Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name, as always, is Bloodstained Wings, and today we're gonna do another recipe page. This is my version of beef and broccoli, uh, the like Asian style, uh, I guess it'd be like a westernized Asian style of beef and broccoli, but then I simplified it even further so it's even less Asian. But um, it is inspired by that meal, I just simplified it for ease of consumption and also for ease of eating and as a result uh it tastes even more like just beef and broccoli and much less like everything the heck else that goes into it when you normally order it at a chinese food canadian or american chinese food restaurant thing place am i gonna try that sentence again you know i'm not am i gonna do this painting heck yeah i am so let's paint along you guys ready for another recipe page i hope so because that's what we're going to be doing. So if you're painting along, um, please remember that we do do gesso paintings underneath. So all of this is gessoed ahead of time. Um, oops, hit the camera. But all of this is gessoed ahead of time so that um, when I paint over it, it's not just pencil. There is, there is paint underneath this. Um, and so we're doing like a tea stained aged paper look. Um, and the way we do that is with our goop, as always, and then a little bit of burnt umber, I believe is what I'm using, yeah, burnt umber. Uh, you can use Van Dyke, Van Dyke Brown if you prefer, but I prefer the burnt umber for absolutely no reason. Um, and then I just kind of start on the outside, work my way to the inside so that there's less and less paint. And we're stretching it further and further and further. And I like to do it with circles for this because I find it helps to give it more of like a model, uh, not, not model, dappled, dap, dap, dappered. You know what? You know, like an inconsistent look, but like a nice inconsistent look. Yeah. Take that words. Haha, how about ye? <sighs> Bet you didn't see that coming. Words. Alright, just a little bit of extra brown in the corners to, to make it have that, what is that called? I know what it's called, when it's like lighter in the middle and darker on the outside. That's, there's a word for that, I'll remember it eventually and then I'll be like, it's this! And you guys will be like, yeah, duh, I yelled it at the screen five minutes ago. And I'll be like, yeah, I know, I know, but I forgot. <laughs> I remember. I believe it starts with a V. Vignette. Vignette. I got there. I know, I know. There's like a, three people in chat being like. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate the support. Um... <laughs> On Twitch, we call it streamer brain, just so you guys know. There is a term for this when you just lose your, your ability to speak entirely. It's, uh, it's called streamer brain and it's a thing. All right, so I am going to go into the white and I'm gonna paint some rice. Um, so the rice in this recipe is actually optional. So I didn't actually tell you how to cook rice. Um, if you don't know how to cook rice, it says so on the packaging of every rice thingy. And I'm pretty sure it's two to one like two two times as much water as there is rice so it's like you want a cup of rice you have two cups of water and one cup of rice that's pretty sure that's how rice recipes go but i mean feel free to double check every time you can do that rice so i'm just uh i need more i need more paint thinner there we go Little pile. I've got tiny, tiny brushes for this whole process here, and uh, that's kind of the idea: is to just use tiny brushes and uh, barely make an impact at all on anything that is going on. I'm gonna smooth that out. I don't, I don't like the way that looks. But yeah.
There we go. Much more rice-like in its consistency. Yeah, so I'm just gonna paint in some rice, paint in some colors. Um, following the traditional colors of this. I think it would be really fun to do like a non-traditionally colored one. Um, but that being said, I'd want there to be consistency in this. Um, but it would be pretty fun to just have like rainbow colored rice or something, but no one's gonna know that it's rice, so. <laughs> That's the thing about doing odd colors is that if you don't do it right, you, you lose everything. All right, we now have rice, excellent. Now you will see that rice is not part of our ingredients down here on the bottom. That's because it's optional. Uh, these are the non-optional ingredients. Uh, while I have the white, I am going to try very hard to have enough of it to do a thin line around the beef, beef, and then it like comes up like this, just a little something. There we go, we're going to tone that down with a bunch of other things, but we now have our, our white, on. oh geez, I keep hitting the darn camera, that darn camera, no, it's okay, it's my fault. Um, all right, so... I think the next color we should use is yellow because yellow is very much one of those colors. I talk about this all the time. Talk about it all the time. Yellow is not as strong. Yellow needs to go to the gym, you know, like it's just, it's not very strong. Please forgive it for not being very strong. I am going to use yellow ochre instead of using lemon yellow um, because it, it, I find it has the same kind of tones as the paper that I'm going for right now that kind of like aged color, you know, what I mean when I say the things that I say? I hope so. I hope you guys can gather my meaning because sometimes I don't use enough words and that's very much a problem. Sometimes I use too many words and then that's the opposite problem, but it does also happen too often. <laughs> I guess you can never really know if I'm going to use enough words or uh, too many or not enough words. Who knows? I'm going to go back into the white. Actually, no, I'm changed my mind. I'm not going to go into the white. I'm going to make uh, a nice combination of um, a little bit of the alizarin crimson mixed with the uh, cadmium red. Um, this is going to give us our nice beefy color. Um, but I have a little bit of white on my brush, and so it's going to give us the nice, like, bloody red kind of meat for the raw meat. And then for the cooked meat, we'll add some brown to it um, up there. But right now we're going for the raw meat colors. Raw meat. Let's just get that going in here. And we will use also this opportunity to thin down the line on the outside. That was the white. Thin that down with the red, because the red goes in the middle. There we go. And now I'm going to mix a little bit more of the white in with that color, get like a nice pinky pinky tone. I'm just going to do a little outside pinky tone action. I think I'm going to actually do a little darker as well on the other side. Watcha! Trying to get a little bit more of the alizarin crimson. And the cadmium red. Still combining them both, just going for like slightly more towards the uh, alizarin crimson. Do 
see if we can just get like a little juicy number on here. That is looking pretty juicy. Yeah, meat. Look at that meat. All right, the outside needs to have a little bit of the uh, of the brown because the skin is kind of brown. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the brown. Mix it in with that meat color that we have going on. Meat color. Wow. I should name colors for companies so they can also have things named things like meat color. I know everybody wants to have meat color. Not like flesh tone. Meat color. <laughs> Why use brown when you can use meat color? I mean, it, it's not it's not quite brown anyways. It's actually got a lot of red in it. But I suppose that's not quite the point. The point is that I want to call it meat color. <laughs> that's the point. Ah, the good thing about oils, you can blend forever. Blend forever! Come back in, darken it up a little bit more. Blend it away again. Come back in with a little bit of the white to highlight on the side of that. And then I can also highlight the ginger while I'm at it. Try not to get it too thin or else it'll just disappear. But I think that is good. Just gonna I'm just going to dab that away a little bit. There we go. There we go. Just a little highlight on that. Give a little highlight to our, uh, our ginger here. And again, going to blend it away slightly just because it's a little thick. Having trouble getting this nice and thin today. It's quite possible it's been a while since I've done a recipe page, but that's okay. We get there. We get there. You work at it slowly and things get better with time. That's definitely a thing that I feel like uh, a lot of people, like, they want to immediately be the best at, at whatever it is they're doing. They're like, immediately, I need to be the best. And I'm like, nay, nay, take your time, go slow. Enjoy being bad at things. There's a lot you can learn from being bad at things. Whereas when you're really good at things, it's harder to learn. You know, the whole learning curve, I mean, like, it, gets like, you know, there's an incline there. So it's like really easy to learn things when you're new at it. So like enjoy that stage when you're learning new things every time you do something. So that's a good stage to be in. It's a much better stage to be in than the stage where you're like, it's wrong and I don't know why it's wrong and I can't fix it. <laughs> 
which is absolutely a problematic stage with sewing, at least. I don't know if it is with painting yet. I haven't gotten there yet. Gotten a lot of, I know it's wrong and it's wrong because of this. I don't know how to fix that, but I, at least I know why it's wrong. Most of the time it's perspective. I'm not very good at perspective. I'll let you guys know that. Uh, the secrets. <laughs> hush hush secrets. I'm not very good at perspective. At any time my paintings are like not as good as they could be, it's because of perspective. It's never anything else, it's always just perspective. <laughs> Trying to add a little bit of some green texture to our broccoli here so that it looks more broccoli like. And by that I mean I'm just like dabbling my brush up and down. Dab dabbling, you know, I'm gonna just keep making up words today. Please feel free to enjoy made up words brought to you by BSW. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go to our cooked broccoli section. Let's do that. This is broccoli. This is broccoli cooked. This recipe, by the way, is a very, very simplified version of the like Asian style beef and broccoli. Very simplified. I like simple recipes. Um, I find that the more complicated a recipe is, the more likely it is I'm not going to do it or I'm going to mess it up or anything else. Um, like I'm just, it's not, I'm not good at complicated recipes. Um, so it's just better for me to have like overly simplified ones. And so I've gotten really good at overly simplifying recipes. I'll tell you. Some of these recipes that these people come up with, you're like, mm, you know what's not necessary? Worcestershire sauce. Not only is it unpronounceable, it's also kind of expensive and you don't need it. <laughs> people are like, it doesn't taste the same without it. And I'm like, no, it tastes better without it. You wanna know why? Because you can taste the broccoli more. I really like broccoli. Uh, <laughs> I just, listen, I just really like broccoli. Um, and so I don't like it when a lot of these like recipes like try to hide the broccoli flavor. I'm not down for that. I am down for making the broccoli stand out even more. You ordered broccoli soup for, or I'm uh, sorry, you ordered beef and broccoli, or I mean, or it's broccoli soup, whatever. You ordered the broccoli for a reason, right? Like, so taste it. If you were like, oh, I don't want to eat broccoli, then the, my recipes are not for you. But if you were like, you know, I love broccoli too. I want to enjoy the flavors of broccoli more than my recipes are for you because I love to just add broccoli and then take away anything else that might take away from the broccoli flavor. You got to just up the ante on the broccoli. Basically this just tastes like broccoli and beef. It does not in fact taste like anything else except for broccoli and beef. But if that's your thing, then yes, you'll love this recipe. If it's not your thing though, I'm sorry to tell you that you probably might not like this, but I like it and that's the important part. Beef, I'm just gonna paint in some beef real quick. That's this part. beef. This is beef. This is going to be beef over here, hidden underneath all the broccoli. This right here, that's beef. There's lots of like beef pieces in beef and broccoli. And there's lots of uh, broccoli florets. I like using the florets for beef and broccoli. I don't like using the stems as much. Um, I find the stems are like slightly more bitter and because I'm not hiding any of the flavors anywhere, there is no hiding. There's only accepting that this is beef and broccoli. Um, and so as a result of the lack of hiding, um, I find that the, uh, the bitterness of the stems really stands out. So I don't tend to use the stems so much. 
when making beef and broccoli for myself. I think there should be a, a little bit right there. Stick it out. Yeah, that looks better. Like I know that I painted that as not beef, but we're just going to put the beef in. Putting the beef in. There we go. A little bit of beef. It's good. Yeah. All right. Let's get some white highlights on the beef because it does not look very tasty at all right now. It just doesn't look tasty. Um, so let's get some white. It's the secret to these things is always adding those like little white highlights. It makes it look good. At least that's what I figured out when I was painting this for the uh, Breath of the Wild pages. By the way, I did paint Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild pages that were recipes. Um, if you would like to take a gander at that, um, it's actually on my website and the links are in the description below. Um, and uh, I actually had a lot of fun painting those and working on those. Um, there's a lot of those recipe pages that I'm like, man, that looks delicious. Um, and I feel like you guys might also feel that way about them. So if you wanted to take a look at that, you can over on my website. There you go. Just adding little things to make it look good. I think that the green needs to be more green. I'm gonna clean my brush, go into the green, get more green. There we go. More green. Get some broccoli looking like broccoli. Oh, that's looking much better now. The broccoli was looking very sad earlier. We needed some sharpness to that broccoli. There we go. Now that broccoli's got bite. Heck yeah. Excellent. That looks much better. Much more delicious. I think I'm going to try to do a little bit of some extra shading on the brown parts of the beef. Try and get some like more brown. I'm going to give it some extra shape and dimension here. You can see. There's some things going on. There we go. That looks a little better. This one can used to be a little darker. There we go. Just darken this whole thing up in the corner here, there. See, we needed more contrast. God, anytime I ever have these problems, it's always because I don't have enough contrast. I'm always afraid of going too dark. And I should never be afraid of that. You know, what am I doing being afraid of things? <laughs> right? Just do it. What am I so afraid of? I agree. All of these times. But it happens, it happens. You get scared of things and you're like, no, but no, just go for it. Go for the more contrast. There we go. Now 
So it helps to like separate things out, make one piece of beef look like its own piece of beef, which is important. You want that beef to have its own beefiness to it. That looks much better. Just give a little roundness there. See? Beef chunks! Beef chunks! And that's what it's all about, having those beef chunks. Alright, we need to do the soy sauce. Soy sauce! And now I'm not specifically branded soy sauce, okay? It's definitely not a specific brand at all. So don't go saying that it is. I went for the most generic soy sauce looking container that I could possibly find online for a reference for this, so don't, don't sue me. I tend to go for the lower salt sodium or lower sodium soy sauce ones. Um, I find that um, that way I can control the salt in my meal a lot better because I will either add some salt or not add salt depending on the soy sauce that I use. If I use a, he a higher salt one, I won't add salt to this meal, but if I use a lower salt one, then I might. So it really depends on the soy sauce that I use. And now you guys can do the same thing if you're going to actually make this recipe. I don't know if anybody actually is going to make this recipe, but if you are, Please uh, do let me know and uh, tell me if you liked it because I love this recipe. I think it's great. Um, the top should be black, but I'll have black on my palette. Okay, so I got a little black to have a little bit of black. Oh God, that's a lot of, that's a lot of black. <laughs> that's, Let's thin that down a bit. There we go. There we go. Little soy sauce action. I'm gonna get some white again to do the highlights. I'm just gonna come in here. Do the highlight on the side of this bottle. Bottle! So it looks nice and shiny, like a real bottle. I'm also going to come around this side and do the same little highlight again to make it look more like a bottle. And a little bit across the top. Flatten it out, do a little highlights on our broccoli pieces here. There we go. All right, and now all we have left to do is paint the bowl. Actually, now that I have the black out, I kind of want to make the bowl black. Whoops, sorry, I made a lot, bunch of noise. But I think I'm going to make the bowl black. I think that that is a splendiferous idea. So. I love how earlier in this video I make up words, and then at the end of the video I use a word correctly, and that word is splendiferous. What is with my vocabulary? Can't remember vignette. Totally fine using splendiferous. <laughs> Does anybody else's brain work like this? Where you just have like the most random memory of things? Make this bowl black. It kind of ended up being a little bit gray. But that's okay. We won't hold it against the bowl. It can be gray all at once. I believe I am getting messages from work which is fun. 
Um, just gonna darken this again some more. There we go. Go back over things, make them darker. There we go. Yeah, looking nice. And then I can do a little white highlight once again. Just highlight the bowl a little bit right there. And a little bit on the rim over here. There. There is my beef and broccoli recipe. I think I'm actually going to highlight the meat a little bit through here. Just like a little. Mm. Yes. Yes. You guys can't see it, but it made a big difference. I'm going to do the same thing on the broccoli. I think. Broccoli. Make that broccoli shine. Be delicious. If I just yell be delicious at it, do you think it'll be it'll work? See the bad thing about painting recipe pages is that now I'm really hungry. <laughs> I'm just really, really hungry and I really want to eat. So with that being said, let's pull up all the tape at once. Yes, that was amazing. This is my beef and broccoli recipe. If you guys are interested, there will be a calendar at the end of the year um, with all of these recipes available. Um, so please uh, stay tuned uh, to my website for more information in regards to that. As always, I want to say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys, your support and your time means the world to me. And please remember that you are loved and you deserve to be loved. And I will see you next week. Mwah! Bye everyone.